Good morning. That was pretty good. We'll try it one more time because I realized I snuck that in by surprise. Good morning. Well, it's wonderful to be together this morning. Welcome to Scout Sunday. Uh, this is a, a great uh, day. I've been looking forward to it. I know the Scout leaders have been looking forward to it. So let me just say a couple of things. First of all, uh, for those who always attend, for those who never attend, or for those who show up Mondays and Tuesday nights for scouting, welcome to Grace Community Church. We're really happy to have you here. We're going to do several things this morning. We're going to uh, introduce the scouts to the church and kind of reintroduce the church to the scouts. And uh, also, you all can help me pray about this because uh, one of the things that we're doing is honoring uh, our church representative, uh, Jim Pegg. And uh, Jim... Uh, has this great little habit of coming in about five minutes after church starts. So we're going to be doing that stuff a little bit later, and he doesn't know about this. His family knows about it. So we're going to see if this plan comes together. But I will tell you this. I have made it a, uh, I don't know if it's a habit. I've just made it a principle in my life that no matter what goes wrong, it's going to be okay. We're going to make it. There's going to come a little bit of time where we're going to have scouts and scout leaders and people making presentations that it might be a little bit of a jumble. Don't worry about that. We're going to be great. But it is good to be here this morning. So happy to have you. I'll tell you what, I'm going to ask in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to stand and I'm going to lead us in an opening prayer. And we're going to say the Apostles Creed and we're going to sing a hymn. And uh, don't worry about Jim. Everything is important in its own time, right? So right now, prayer is important, and then the Apostles' Creed will be important, and then the hymn will be important, and after that, we'll worry about Jim. How's that, all right? Let's stand together. Jesus, thank you for this day. Every day that you give us to live is a gift, and this is a beautiful one for us here in Claremont, Florida. Jesus, we, uh, we honor you, we worship you, Lord, you are welcome here. Lord, be with us as uh, we worship together. Thank you, Lord, for visiting friends. We're grateful for them and uh, the relationship that we have with them. Jesus, they're a blessing to us, and may we be a blessing to them. And Lord, I pray that you would accept the praise that we bring to you this day. In Christ's name, amen. 
So I don't usually explain things as we work through, as we go through, but since we have visitors today, uh, we're going to, uh, to say the Apostles' Creed, and it's, it's a basic doctrine, or it's a basic statement of Christian doctrine. So I say to the congregation quite often, Christian, what do you believe? And then this is what we say. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So whenever we say that, um, there is one statement in there uh, that we always get questions from. Now, I get questions from different statements throughout, and I'm fine answering those, like not here. We'll talk about it afterwards. But people come to me and say, well, wait a second. What's this about the Holy Catholic Church? Because this is a Protestant church, and here's the explanation. Whenever we have a Protestant church on one corner and a Catholic church on the other corner, that's a Roman Catholic church. The word Catholic means universal, all right? So whenever we say we are part of the Catholic Church, it means we're part of the universal church. And what does that mean? It means that we are part of the church as God knows it to be, right? So it doesn't matter if you attend church, but if you're not a believer, you're not part of the Catholic Church, all right? So that's what that means. So we're going to join together in singing a hymn of the church. Some of you know it, some of you it will be brand new, but it's another statement of faith and personal affirmation. It's called, My Faith Has Found a Resting Place, and let's sing it together.
let's bow this morning. Father, we are grateful for this day. Thankful, Lord, for life and health and strength and all of the great things that you give us. Jesus, we are grateful for our guests this morning, for those who are involved in scouting at every level. Jesus, we're thankful for this relationship that we have. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us, your church, to be a blessing to them. And Lord, give us wisdom in knowing how best to help lead them and be a friend to them. Jesus, as they are here, Lord, I'm especially mindful of the boys who are a part of our scouting group. Jesus, each one of, each one of them is important. Lord, yes, they're, they're in troops and packs and, uh, and, and groups, but Lord, you see them each one as individual and precious in your sight. Jesus, each one is a special creation, and I pray for them a special blessing and ask that you would watch over them and that you would guide them into all truth, that you would guard their hearts and guard their lives. Bless their families. Bless the scout leaders, I pray. We thank you for them. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness to all of us in bringing us together. Lord, as we pray, we think of people within our church, and Lord, maybe some of our uh, visiting friends who either have uh, uh, physical issues or maybe emotional, uh, emotionally difficult situations, financial problems. Lord, you care about all of those things. You don't always rush in with every answer as quickly as sometimes we would like. Lord, you promise that you are with us in and through those difficult times. And so, Jesus, for everyone who is struggling with something, I lift them to you and pray that you would bless them and pray that you would touch them. Jesus, you know this day, you know this service, and Lord, no one is here by accident. It's all part of greater plans beyond what we know. Jesus, we're grateful to be here, and we thank you for your presence. Lord, bless us and continue to do so in our time together. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So you have been standing for a little while, so we're going to let you be seated for just a little bit. I want to, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is going to be a little bit of a reintroduction because this church used to have Scout Sundays and we haven't for a few years we want to start them up again. And so uh, we're going to introduce uh, scouting to the church. And later on, I'll introduce the church to a little bit more of scouting. And uh, we think we know what we're doing today, but we'll figure out how we did afterwards. But I want to introduce uh, to you Mike Wonderlick. Mike is the, uh, the scout master for, our, uh, for the Boy Scout uh, troop. And Mike is going to come. And he's going to share a PowerPoint with us so that we have some idea of uh, what, uh, what scouting is. Uh, one other thing before you come, Mike, I do want to uh, say hello. No, you can say, you're, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, I do want to say hello to a special guest this morning, uh, Tom Buckner. I would just ask Tom if he would just stand and wave at us. So Tom is the district executive for the Lake District, and he's here with us. Thank you, Tom. All right, Mike Wonderlich, come and share. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to talk loudish. Oh, why don't you can talk less loud if you have the microphone? We'll do that. It's. I think it'll be on as soon as they turn it on. It's not on yet. Okay, so. Okay. Speak really loud until it comes on, and we'll pretend that it works, and then it will work. We'll get it. We'll get it. Okay, good. Uh, talking to a tamer audience than 50 rambunctious young guys who just got into the room after practice and school and stuff. So uh, I'm the Scout Master for the Boy Scout Troop here. We also uh, have a Cub Scout pack. Cub Scouts are... Kindergarten uh, up through fifth grade, and Boy Scouts are uh, 11 year olds or 10 year olds, uh, 18 year olds. We also have what's called a venturing crew here uh, at the church. Venturing is for youth age 14 through 21. We give them a 
a little bit more time in scouting and uh, they do a little bit more advanced stuff. So they'll go on, you know, the big hikes and stuff like that. But Grace Community Church is the chartered organization for all of those units. Um, and what that means is this church um, gives us the uh, sort of a business footing for, for doing the program. You guys provide the facilities, uh, a lot of miscellaneous support, and we just really thank you for that. But in some ways, we're kind of invisible to a lot of you guys. We, we come on Mondays. Um, we do try to stay out of the way as much as possible. It doesn't always happen, but we try. Um, and so we just wanted to show up today to say thank you and give you guys a little insight into the program that you're supporting every day um, and that you know we love. So uh, 22 years of scouting here at Grace Community Church. You guys have been a chartered organization for one scout unit or another for over 22 years. That's a long time. And in that time, uh, you've supported three kinds of scouting. We've had 43 Eagle Scouts come out of our program in the Boy Scouts. That's pretty remarkable. If you uh, notice when you walk in, in the hallway, there's these three plaques, and every Eagle Scout's name is on that plaque. So when you guys come in and out for church, just take a look at that. We add fairly regularly to that, to that plaque, so that's cool. Um, hundreds of youth have been served through this program and your support. Uh, 50 are active today in our Boy Scout troop, 52 actually. Um, that means we do thousands of hours of volunteer work every year in the community. So one of the things I was talking to Pastor Jerry about is that having the Boy Scout and you know the scouting program associated with the church actually causes a lot of volunteer hours in the community through the church. So it's kind of like a cheat code, I guess, for getting community service done out in the community from this church so that's pretty cool uh we also collect tons of food every year so we have a program called scouting for food in november we go out and we canvas the neighborhoods you've probably found these little bags on your door in, in november we ask you to fill them up with food we collect them the next weekend and we bring them to a local food pantry literally tons of food are collected every year under that program is the largest single day food drive in america so that's pretty cool uh we do over 300 outdoor activities in, the, in our history with a minimum of 12 every year. I think that's really important these days with kids glued to screens so much, right? They're inside so much. We get them outdoors and we, we teach them skills they don't learn in school. Um, the tenants of our group, Scout Oath, Scout Law, remind us to be reverent. So there's a built-in component for, um, you know, thinking about your religion, your beliefs. Uh, we are taking an oath to do our duty to our God and country. Uh, we also take an oath every week to do um, help other people at all times and to keep ourselves morally straight. So these are parts of our weekly promise and oath that we make that I think reflect uh, the values of this organization, right? So uh, we're, we're doing a lot to promote these kinds of values to the youth. I think it's unique among youth programs. Um, we focus on character development, citizenship training, and leadership. The scouts run the program. They plan it. They execute it. For better or for worse, it, they do it all. Uh, we're there to keep them safe is the way I view it um, as adults. Uh, it produces mental and physical fitness uh, as a focus. And one of the things that's neat about scouting is it's a static group. So, like, if you were in baseball or Little League, you might join a team and you might be really close to them for a season, but then the next season your team probably changes, right? In scouting, you join a lot of times at six years old and you're with that group of scouts until you turn 18. So it's a really unique program where the youth build these very deep bonds with each other. And not only does that mean that they have these great friendships, which you know go outside of scouting into school, into the community, but um they also can do more challenging things together because they know each other really well, right? They know who can cook. They know who can clean. They know the guy who can do the knots the best. So they can get things done faster, better, and bigger. Uh, we do more outdoor time than any other youth activity. I think that's really important, like I said. And we present the most diverse set of challenges to youth that are available in a youth program. Things like uh, personal management. How do you do your money? How do you plan your time? Uh, outdoor skills, obviously, 
um, citizenship, technology. We teach them how to use watercraft, kayaks, canoes, even sailboats. So they get a lot of really diverse opportunities to learn different skills and find passions that they then take into their professional life and their personal life forever. Um, scuba, snorkeling, things they might not even have the chance to do if they weren't in scouting, right? Pretty cool stuff. And so some pictures. Uh, this is our Cub Scout pack. A uh, bunch of young guys having fun. Um, they go out and they do all kinds of stuff. They do a lot of popcorn. You've probably seen us selling popcorn. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen us at anywhere else, you've probably seen us selling popcorn. Uh, we go camping. They go on watercraft as well. Even in the Cub Scouts, they get to do those things, camping, watercraft. Um, there we go. Pinewood Derby is like the Super Bowl of scouting for Cub Scouts. They make a car and they race them down this track. It's amazing. If you guys have never been there, uh, you should come next year. It's a lot of fun to watch, and uh, that's awesome. Um, we do scouting for food, like I mentioned. Even the young guys learn how to cook. I think that's a cool skill that a lot of youth don't pick up anymore. Um, this is a picture of our troop at our first court of honor last year. So a nice big crew here in the church. You know, wanted to have you guys see, you know, we, we come here, we use the church, and we appreciate that, right? Um, Eagle Scouts. Oh, I mentioned Eagle Scouts. We're really proud of all of our Eagle Scouts. Um, this is just a little bit of an example uh, in the upper left, that's Case Campbell. Uh, Case just uh, earned his Eagle Scout last year, but we just learned that Case actually was selected as the District Eagle Scout Project of the Year. So his project was selected for distinct honor. He's being honored at the uh, Council Awards Banquet on May 10th, and uh, he'll be receiving a very prestigious award called the James West Fellowship. And it's a very unique uh, acknowledgement for a young man's accomplishment. He built a 24 foot by 20 foot foot, uh, foot horse barn for Dreamcatcher Ranch where they can house four rescue horses now. So that's pretty cool. Um, uh, that's just a picture of the Eagle Awards at one of the Court of Honor uh, for Logan Gibrats. That's Logan getting his uh, Eagle pin. Uh, this is an example in the lower left. The district gives these really cool neckerchiefs to every Eagle Scout at their Court of Honor. So that's cool. We have a lot of guys with those neckerchiefs. So when they show up at a Court of Honor, I like to get the, you know, the glam shot. Joey uh, Vincic just had his Eagle Scout Court of Honor. And that's just a picture of a cool thing from. Uh, we do a lot of stuff. So like I said, we're outside as often as we can be. Upper left, we're swimming at Kelly Springs. We went there. Uh, they did swimming, cooking, and we uh, we tricked them into doing things like finding ten species of natural stuff as they walk around. And so we do plant plant identification, uh, wildlife identification. Uh, in the upper right hand corner, that's a picture of the boys uh, after they've finished competing in last year's uh, fall camporee. Camporee is kind of a competition for scouts. Uh, Hard to see, but they're holding up a lot of red and uh, blue ribbons, so a lot of first and second places. We lost the Campery by one point, uh, which if you win the Campery, you have to host the next year. So I said, perfect. Perfect. Uh, that's just another outing we were on, and then we did an ugly sweater contest at our Christmas Court of Honor. So Courts of Honor, if you don't know, is when we give out uh, all the awards they've earned in a more formal way. Uh, so we have a lot of fun when we do those, uh, three of those a year, to recognize the scouts and their accomplishments. Uh, just another night here at the church where uh, that set of youth uh, have been elected to an honor society within scouting. So they're being recognized by their fellow scouts as, um, you know, demonstrating the ideals of our scouting movement uh, the most. They learn a lot of different things, like I mentioned. That's... Uh, Ethan Lack, he's proud of his archery score at camp. Uh, we've got um, chess. I am totally blown away by how much the scouts love chess. It's amazing. But it's like, would they play that at home? Probably not. But they come here. We had a whole chess tournament around here one night. There were chess boards everywhere. It was amazing. Um, shelter building down the left-hand corner. So one of the things they have to learn how to do is survival, uh, wilderness survival. That's a shelter they put together and slept in one night. 
Uh, that's also another shelter. One of the scouts built at summer camp. He had a little more time. It was pretty cool. Taj Mahal and it was his birthday. So the boys decorated it and he slept in it that night with his birthday stuff on it. Uh, upper left corner, we do a lot with the flag. Uh, we try to teach respect of the flag, how to, uh, raise it, lower it. We do a flag ceremony every week to open our meetings. Uh, we do retirement ceremonies, by the way. So if anybody has flags that need to be retired, they're no longer uh, able to be flown in a condition that can be flown, you can bring them. You can give them to Pastor Jerry or drop them off on a Monday night. We keep those flags. And then periodically, the Boy Scouts are one of the few organizations in the country that are authorized to uh, retire flags. So periodically, we have a flag retirement. Um, so if you have any flags that are in need of retirement, please let us know. Those guys learn how to repel. So they climb up a big wall at camp and they repel down it. That's why they're wearing helmets. <laughs> uh, they learn how to do pioneering projects. This one in the bottom left-hand corner is a, we call a monkey bridge. Um, it's basically a big rope that you walk tightrope style with two handholds. Um, this is about a 30-foot span that they're building here. And we use this at crossover. So when scouts come of age and they're ready to go from cub scouts to boy scouts uh they walk across that bridge so we literally cross over the bridge into boy scouts and they think that's pretty cool and then uh that's ben at summer camp learning how to sail a sailboat so cool stuff oh, cooking one of my passions is getting the guys to cook um these are mostly from a november outing every november we have what we call camps giving and we cook three turkeys and a ham, and then every patrol, which is a smaller set of our boys, they have to do a side dish and a dessert. And what we end up with is a big Thanksgiving dinner that night. Um, so they they did uh, turkey in the Dutch ovens. That's what's there in the middle with the hot coals on it. Um, those guys in the upper right-hand corner are making cookies. They're <laughs> working real hard at it, concentrating real hard. Um, and then there's the feast that they ended up with. Pretty cool. We've been the honor guard at Solar Bears games. So a lot of the, the sporting teams will have us come and do honor guard. Uh, we've been hiking on the Florida Trail. Uh, this is a different kind of hike. This is called Big Stump. Uh, the mud can get up to here. And it's about a mile in and a mile out. So the, the scouts, we tell them, don't bring shoes that are precious or clothes that are precious because they're going to get like that. And they love it. They just get in it. They don't have to be in it like that, but they are. Uh, and then we do all kinds of other things. So um, we're going to sea base uh, at the end of May. Uh, we're taking uh, 12 boys and four adults uh, on a week-long adventure where we go out to a deserted island. And we stay five nights, five days, four nights, survivor style. We have to fish for our dinner one night. Um, so they learn a lot of cool skills there. We've had scouts go to uh, Summit Bechtel Reservation in Virginia for the National Jamboree, which is a gathering of tens of thousands of scouts from around the world and country. Uh, huge, big experience for them to get out and, and have that type of experience. Philmont, we've had a couple of Philmont crews over the years. Philmont is probably the, the pinnacle of high adventure for Boy Scouts. It's in uh, Arizona. There's these big mountains you go hike uh, for 14 days or 10 days, whatever you choose huge accomplishment they work really hard to fundraise to train and be able to go to that we have camps here in florida for la noche we've been to uh north carolina raven knob and uh camp shans in hawthorne florida uh and we have a group going to camp daniel boone um which i think is in georgia i guess uh anyway we get out and we do a lot of cool things so that's that's what i wanted to share with you guys today and i'll hand it back to pastor jerry for us directly and indirectly. All right. Thank you, uh, Mike, but don't go too far uh, because we need to do several things. Um, uh, we're going to uh, do some charter organization uh, gifts, but I need to ask if the designated scouts would escort Mr. Jim Pegg to the platform. Uh, Jim Pegg is the charter organization uh, representative. That means that he's our representative to the scouts. So Jim, if you'll come forward. 
And while he's coming, uh, I'd like to have, uh, if we could get a representative, uh, asking Eric uh, Nielsen to come. He'll introduce himself in just a moment. We can get uh, representatives from the different uh, scouting branches to come. Why don't we do the charter first? And you can all, why don't we just stand up here? Jimmy, you okay climbing steps? Good. He's an old scout. Of course you're good climbing steps. All right. Okay. So some of you guys know me as the AB guy here. But today I'm also here in my role as the district commissioner for Lake District. Myself with Jason Smiley, the district chairman, and Tom Buckner as the district executive, we take care of the 50 scouting units within Lake District. So Lake District is the actual county. So it's a big piece of real estate to work with. So one of my joys is working specifically with the units here at Grace Community. So I'm here to present the charters for Crew 268 that has been in existence for five years. Alice? Then Troop 268 for 21 years. And then of course, you have to have a beginning, so the pack for 22 years. Wonderful. All right. <laughs> All right. The, um, uh, the scouts have a presentation that they would like to make uh, to Jim Pegg. So, Mr. Pegg, uh, we started a tradition, and we wanted to give you this small token of our appreciation. You know the joke. Scouting is one hour a week. All right. And so in recognition of that, we have started giving um, our longtime leaders an hourglass to remind them of that one hour a week and the time they spent. This hourglass says, in grateful recognition of outstanding service, one hour a week. So thank you, sir. Well, Jim, I'm thrilled that you made it because there's a little more going on here today than, uh, than you're aware of. I, uh, uh, I want to talk to you just uh, briefly about Jim Pegg and because I think there are things about him that most of us don't know and that uh, will surprise most of us. Um, I, I, I would just share this. Jim has been involved in uh, scouting as an adult leader for this marks his 60th year because he began, that's right. He began in 1964. And whenever I sat down and talked with him, I thought, well, he must have had a wonderful experience as a scout when he was younger. And that's what led him into scouting. And as it turns out, that wasn't the case. He became a scout in Indiana when uh, he was a young man, and I asked him about that, and he said it was really a pretty bad experience. He said they would go to their, uh, they didn't have much leadership, they would go to their, uh, their meetings every week, it was a cabin out in the woods, and they would light a fire and then play tag for the rest of the time, and they did no real activities. In fact, he went and bought a scout handbook Learned, taught himself to tie all the knots, took some of his friends who weren't even scouts and did some of the outdoor activities with them. And so when Jim uh, comes to scouting, it's not because he had a wonderful experience. He comes to scouting because he wanted to make what he thought might have, could have been a great experience for him. He wanted to be great for everyone else. But there's something else that most of us don't know about Jim. Jim was hired by the Boy Scouts and was part of the executive committee in the state of Michigan in 1964. And he was given a district with 400 scouts in it. And they told him that 400 was saturation level. That's about as many scouts as you could come up with in that, in that district. But he was thinking and he came up with the idea 
for something that he called School Night for Scouting. And the first year he held that, it was a great success. Now, he worked really hard at it. He had uh, all of the grocery stores. When, uh, if you went to get your groceries, they would roll up a flyer and put it in the, put it in the, uh, the grocery sack. The, um, the dairy printed an advertisement for school night for scouting on the cartons. And he had the first school night for scouting and he went from 400 to 800 scouts. Now that at least, that certainly has to be saturation level, right? Uh, the second year that he did it, he had uh, three other districts that joined him and his district went to a thousand scouts. The third year, the states of Ohio, Michigan, and Indiana joined him. And the fourth year, it went national. If you go online and Google School Night for Scouting, there is page after page after page of, uh, of, of websites and conversations about School Night for Scouting. I will tell you this, uh, he's ours and we're not giving him away. But I don't think there is any person alive who has had a greater effect on scouting than Jim Pegg. He has brought, that's right. Without a doubt, he has brought millions of scouts into scouting. And again, he's ours and uh, we're not uh, going to give him away. Now, uh, one thing that we like to do and we don't do enough is honor those among us who are worthy of honor. Jim Pegg, we are thrilled to honor you today because uh, you've been so important to this church and, this, uh, and, and to, to scouting. And so we have a certificate for you and I would like to read it and we will give that to you. And um, uh, it says this, it's Certificate of Recognition. Jim, why don't you step up here a little bit? So that's good. And we'll even give you a chance to say something in a minute. <laughs> this is a Certificate of Recognition proudly presented to Jim Pegg. For 60 years of adult leadership in Boy Scouts of America, 1964-2024. For creating School Night for Scouting, which has welcomed millions of young men into scouting and for honorable rep, uh, representation of our Lord Jesus Christ and his church. It's signed by the elders of the church, by the Eric Nielsen, the district commissioner and the representatives of the Boy Scouts and the Cub Scouts. Congratulations, Jim. God bless you. Would you like to make a speech? I don't think, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> well, on your way, uh, see, it's, you're all blessed to know Jim because on your way out today, you can get cupcakes and drink and all of that. And this is a special day. Uh, look at this. They put your high school picture up there on the screen. <laughs> It's the one that we could find quickly, okay. but uh, but Jim from uh, uh, from the Scouts and from the church, uh, we're blessed to know you. You're a wonderful friend, and you've uh, you've exercised uh, wise leadership in uh, in your roles with the Scouts and your roles with the church, and we honor you today. God bless you. I do have. All right. I have a wonderful family that has helped me through the life so far. And I'm uh, just proud of our family. <clears throat> I'm also proud of my scouting family. I'm proud of our church family. And they all mean very much to me. And I, and I, and I like to add one more group, and that's my extended family. And that's the ones that are believers that are outside the list that I just mentioned. And... Uh, God has been so good to me. So good to me. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you, Jim. And we will, I tell you what, the, uh, 
we'll have the scouts uh, escort you back to your place. And uh, the hourglass and the certificate we'll put on the table out in the back. Now, I do know this, that sometime in this next week, uh, Jim doesn't Jim doesn't know this, by the way. Uh, the uh, uh, what's the name of that uh, the time? No, the news leader, yes. I'm learning my learning my newspapers, but the news leader uh, wants to sit down and interview you about your life in scouting and your relationship with the church. So let's see if we can work that into our schedule, all right? All right, thank you. Hang on a second. There we go. Step over. Good. <laughs> Steve Pomeroy saves the day. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Let's join together singing a very simple chorus. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Boy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. One more time. I love you. be seated and I'm going to ask the, the scouts to come forward. We're going to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. All right, I'll come to the front, down to the front, and we'll have you hold for just a second. All right. So this is a reminder of a couple of things. Uh, whenever we give, we're not paying a tax or anything like that. We give because God has first given to us. If you are here and you are our guest, feel free to let it pass unless you've had a life plan to come today and drop 10000 in the in the plate. <laughs> if that was part of your life plan, far be it from us to get in the way of that. All right. But we give today as unto the Lord. Okay, scouts. Go ahead and do that, and then we will sing together. Bless his holy name as we receive our offering this morning. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. 
let's stand together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He has done great things, has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy in me, bless his holy name. Thank you for your giving, and you may be seated. Well, welcome once again to Scout Sunday. I promise not to take too much time with the remainder here because there are cupcakes awaiting all of us. But it's important to take the time uh, this morning to reacquaint ourselves with each other. So, as we've already begun to do, Troop and Pack and the Venture Crew 268 need to be reintroduced to Grace Community Church, and Grace Community Church needs to know the Troop and the Pack. I think Mike Wunderlich did a great job. Uh, this morning, talking to you about scouting. Uh, but to Grace Community Church, I want to say this. The Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts, and the Venture Pack, um, no, the Venture Crew, I got that right, uh, 268 are ours. Did you know that? They really are ours. We own them. We're their charter organization. Now, Scouts, I want you to just relax because we're not going to do this but church, if we were to choose to shut them down, we would own two scout equipment trailers and a lot of tools, materials, and old uniforms that we would have no idea what to do with. We don't want to do that. And as a church, we have a responsibility of care and oversight toward them. And we want to make scouting the very best experience that they can possibly have. And as a church, we need to provide a safe and secure home base for them. And as a church, we need to exist honorably so that they can be proud of the organization that sponsors them. And the church said, amen. Uh, to the troop in the pack and the crew, we are more than a location. This is a building, but Grace Community Church is a mobile organization made up of people who believe that the Bible is the word of God that God is our creator, that Jesus, God's son, was sent to earth, born of a virgin, lived a perfect and sinless life, died a sacrificial death for the sins of the world, was resurrected to life. That's what last Sunday, that's what Easter was all about. And he provides forgiveness and eternal life to all who believe in him. Now, there's more to it than that, but there's certainly not less to it than that. We believe that the world in which we exist is wonderful in many ways, but it's also a battlefield between good and evil. And we all take part in that, whether we think we are or not. It's just a fact of our existence. And the question before all of us is always on which side will we live and on which side will we fight? So, I, scouts, got to pay attention. Grace Community Church may seem like a nice little church filled with kindly older people, but it's a lot more than that. Beneath these little disguises, we are ninja warriors for good against evil, for right against wrong, and for life against death. 
you are blessed to know us. There you go. So now the introductions are done. On with the talk. I ran across this story, and this was actually a long time ago. Um, it, it comes to us from 1982. That's the year for reference that I, it's the year after I graduated from high school. Yikes. But way back in 1982, a 33-year-old man by the name of Larry Walters made a rather interesting choice on a particular day. And here's a bit from the July 2nd Associated Press story from Long Beach, California. Here it goes. A truck driver with 45 weather balloons rigged to a lawn chair took a 45-minute ride aloft to 16,000 feet today before he got cold, shot some balloons out, and crashed into a power line, the police said. I know it sounds strange, but, but it's true, Lieutenant Rod Mickelson said after he stopped laughing. The guy just filled up the balloons with helium, strapped on a parachute, grabbed the BB gun, and took off. Safety inspector Neil Savoy said the flying lawn chair was spotted by Transworld Airlines. By the way, this is so long ago. I don't think there is Transworld Airlines any longer. And Delta Airlines, Jetliner, there is one of those. I flew one of those on Thursday. But they saw him at 16,000 feet above sea level. For a little reference, that's a little more than three miles above the ground. This is what they said. We know he broke some part of the Federal Aviation Act. And as soon as we decide which part it is, some type of charge will be filed, Mr. Zavoy said. If he had a pilot's license, we'd suspend that, but he doesn't. They interviewed Larry, and he said, Since I was 13 years old, I've dreamed of going up into the clear blue sky in a weather balloon. By the grace of God, I fulfilled my dream, but I wouldn't do this again for anything. I've heard it said that life is choices. And Larry's life was certainly made a lot more interesting by his choice to ride that lawn chair into the heavens that day. In another interview, uh, he is reported to have said, I couldn't just sit there. I wanted to do something. The Bible lesson for us today is about a choice made by an important Bible figure. And the choice that he made, some of us have made, and it's out in front of some of the rest of us. Because we all come to the same point that he did, and I hope, I hope that we all do as well as he did. The man's name was Joshua. Joshua was the guy who took over the leadership of the nation of Israel after Moses died. They were wandering in the desert at that time. It was Joshua's job to lead the nation out of the desert and into what was for them the promised land. And it wasn't a job that Joshua had particularly sought. It was God who chose him for that task. Now, the land that they had left, a place called Egypt, it was filled with very religious people worshiping more gods than they could count. The land that they were entering was filled with more people groups who worshipped more gods than you could count. It was the nation of Israel through whom God gave the news to the world that, hey, by the way, everyone, while you're all trying to worship gods and find a way to God, there is only one true God, and he is the creator of heaven and earth. The famous religious saying of Israel was as follows, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. But you know how things go if you've ever taken a long journey with kids. Uh, if you've taken a vacation with kids, you know how quickly the complaining and the fighting can begin. And some of the Israelites, as Joshua takes over leadership, they were complaining because they had been out wandering in the desert now for almost 40 years, moving, setting up tents, setting up camp, moving on. And Joshua knew because they were murmuring that he had to make a stand. And so he gathered the people together and he gave a long speech about what they should do and then what he was going to do and the choice that he was going to make. I'm going to spare you that long speech. But here are the two closing verses of the speech. As he addressed the Israelites, uh, he said these words. Now, fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, 
Then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua is remembered for many things, but I think probably most of all, he is remembered for that choice. In fact, if you go down to Hobby Lobby, I'll almost guarantee that somewhere on a wall, they're selling a plaque that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. By the way, it's a good plaque to have in your house, but it's even better to actually believe and agree with that plaque. For 4,000 years, people have reflected on that choice and no one can really improve on it. And the best we can do is copy it. So two brief points. Life is choices. We begin with that. There's a choice to be made. The scout motto, be prepared. You know, that's not a statement for sitting back and watching the world go by, is it? It's a statement of action. It's a statement of choice. Because we tend not to be naturally prepared for much of anything. If something positive is going to happen, we have to prepare in the great drama of life, there are choices that have to be made. You might wake up one morning and look around and find that for some strange reason, you are lost in the middle of a forest. And you need to know certain things at that point. How do I make a fire? And how do I build a shelter? And how do I purify water if I find that? How do I find water? How do I find food? How do I cook food? How do I avoid poisonous snakes, insects, and plants? How do I decide if it's best in my location to begin hiking out, or should I find a way to send up some sort of a signal so that others will know where I am so that I can be found? You know, it actually takes some study and it takes some skill uh, to, and it's some effort to learn those skills. I bet Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts work at just those sorts of skills because you can't just sit there you have to do something. So you make the choice now to prepare for that dreaded morning when you wake up and you are indeed lost in that forest. God calls us not to just sit here, but to do something, to declare ourselves, to make an affirmative choice. The Bible is quite clear that while God has made the world and he has made us, uh, there's something a little wrong with us. We're broken and I have a Sometimes it's a little difficult to explain, but when I give examples, people always know what I mean. Parents, why is it that we have to work really hard to teach our kids to be good, but they are just all-stars at being bad? It's like, it's just the way, it's just the way of the world. It's, it's harder to work to accomplish. It's harder to live clean and orderly than it is disheveled and dirty. Those things that are good, you kind of have to put some effort, and that's the way of the world. And the Bible tells us, and God tells us in his word that, yeah, we're all, there's like moral entropy. We're all kind of decaying, and we're all falling by the wayside. And God wants something better for us than that. He wants us to be his children. He wants us as part of his family. And he wants us to turn from our sin. Well, what sin? Pretty simple, actually. It's the wrong that we do. And everyone has done wrong. Well, how do you get into the family of God? Well, Jesus makes it very clear to us. In John chapter 1, verse 12, we are told simply, yet to all who received him, that's Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. That's it. You must believe in Jesus to become a child of God. To make the choice to serve the Lord is to bring your sin and yourself to Jesus, finding the forgiveness that only he can give. It's the most important choice you can make. I'm going to say that again because I know the important choices we have to make, right? We got to choose the right doctors and we have to do all the right things, get the right insurance, make all of these plans. The most important choice you will ever have before you is whether or not you will listen to God's call and serve the Lord. And as you heard a little bit earlier this morning, the groundwork of, the, of that choice or the groundwork for that call uh, is already laid within the scouts. You hear them talking about being reverent and uh, scouts recognize that there is a God. And that's a great beginning. 
That's a great beginning. And one of the tasks of the church is to help especially those people who've had a great beginning move on to a great conclusion. Because in that is the most important challenge of your life. What will I do with the call that God makes to me? Even more important than knowing how to build a shelter in a forest is knowing to say yes. Well, so let me just give you two quick things, reasons for making the right choice. And the first one, you're going to go, come on, man, that's so obvious and simple. It's not a reason. But yeah, it is because people overlook it. Two glaring reasons why we should choose to serve the Lord. First of all, we should make that choice because it's the right choice to make. See, isn't that easy? It's the right choice to make. That's reason enough. God invites us to make it. He calls us to make it. In his word, he talks to us about who we are and tells us what's right with us and tells us what's wrong with us. And he gives a diet to make. And that choice to serve the Lord God by receiving the salvation that he offers through his son, Jesus. And the choice is always before us. And the future of our lives is determined by whether or not we make that choice to serve the Lord. But there's another important reason to make that choice. And it's this. We don't live to ourselves. We live for other people. And we're in packs and troops and dens and crews. And we're in family. And we influence other people. And so when Joshua said, I will serve the Lord, he said more than that, didn't he? He said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Because Joshua knew that it wasn't enough for him to win. He had to win for his family. He wanted them to come along. He could not turn his back on God and expect his children to do something better. So on that day before the nation of Israel, Joshua made that definitive choice. Before all of the people, he said, I'm going to serve the Lord and my house is going to serve the Lord. And in so doing, he was preserved, as was his family. And everyone after him who makes that same choice, sitting around and watching the world go by, will not get it done. Action is called for, an action that will benefit you and your family forever. I'm two minutes from closing. I want to reflect with you just briefly on something that I talked to the church about last Sunday at our Easter service on a God-blessed choice that was made by my grandmother. Now, my grandmother was a nice lady. Most people's grandmothers are. Uh, fairly high society in the town of Cincinnati, Ohio. She had never in her life heard the good news that Jesus will forgive your sins and change your life and set you right with God. Uh, she didn't know that, that God loved her. She didn't know that there was a choice to make. She didn't know that God wanted to forgive her. And her neighbor, across the street neighbor, West 8th Street, it's a big four-lane street, so road with lots of traffic walked across and told her one more one day about Jesus and asked her if she would like to receive him and she did and it changed our family forever because of her my dad's a believer and our family growing up were believers and because of her my wife and I's children are believers because it wasn't enough for her to just say, I will serve the Lord. She determined that with everything in her, it was not only going to be her, but it was her and her house, her and her children and her children's children ever after. She's been gone a long time. She's been gone 50 years, but she impacts us every day of our lives. Parents, moms and dads, you can change your eternity, but even more than that, you can change your children's eternity. But you can't just sit there. You got to do something. Some of our visitors this morning, you have church homes. I want you, through our relationship here, 
to be the best church member and attender at that church that you can possibly be. Let us bless you in that. If you're here today and you don't have a church home and you're looking around, um, this, is as, this is as intense as it gets. I'll just say you're welcome. All right? You would probably fit in with us. You'd probably fit in just fine. And we would love to help you. Because you see, it's one thing to hear that there's a choice. Sometimes you need people to come along and help you know how to make that choice and uh, show you the difference that Jesus has made in our lives because we've made that choice. It doesn't make us perfect. <laughs> you put us out in the forest by ourselves, most of us wouldn't make it. But we're part of the family of God, and we love that we are. And uh, we love to welcome you in. So as the pastor of the sponsoring organization, just let me say, if there is anything that I can do to help you, if you have a spiritual issue, a religious question, you just need to shoot the breeze and no one's listened to you in a long time, I do that. And our church, we pray for you. And we pray God's best for you and your family, and for the scouts who meet at Grace Community Church. And I will leave you with this. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. I hope that's true at your house as well. Let's stand together. Jesus, for this day, we give you thanks. Thank you, Lord, for scouts. Thank you, Lord, for honorable men like Jim Pegg, who have led the way and blessed so many others by his life and his witness. We're grateful for you and for your love for us. We're grateful, Lord, for the cupcakes that we're going to have in just a little bit. Lord, the next breath that we breathe will come to us as a direct gift from you. and We thank you for it. Bless us, Lord, as we go our separate ways. Watch over us and keep us in your care. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we close, we're going to sing a really simple song. It's like four lines. It's the doxology. And we sing it without, uh, let me see if we do that yet. We sing it without music. So you can just follow along. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. You are dismissed. Go with God. There's drink and there's cupcakes. And I think that at least that one cupcake will not mess up your lunch, okay? You'll be good. Thanks for being here today. It is not what you have required. You search much deeper within.